We need to get ready for the snowplow. Hey, this is John Young of The Weekend Handyman. Today I'm going to be going and doing some trimming. Now we've got our, our kind of township road here that comes in to our office space. And they've got branches that have been growing over the road. And they've been doing that for a number of years. And now we're in the upper Midwest, which means that we have not only the grading and blading of the driveway, or the, the township road, excuse me, that, that happens, but in the winter time, this is a big thing, is that we get the sand trucks and the, the plow trucks that come down. The branches have grown over the road a little bit, so they're starting to hit the mirrors and the cab of the, the truck, and, and I don't want to have that happen where they're damaging their vehicle. So we're going to go down and trim some of the branches. And we're going to do this in, in I'm going to do this, and then we're going to record it all, and we'll fast forward, and I'll give you an idea of how long it took. What I'm going to be using today, now you could use, uh, I've got different battery option for pole saws and such here, some gas versions, but I need to go higher, and I want to have that. So I'm using a silky saw here from... Uh, Hayuchi, maybe, is how it's pronounced, and if I said it wrong, I apologize. Um, this particular one is is uh, was purchased in 2011. This is a 21-foot pole saw. It has a super sharp blade. Now, this particular saw has, has trimmed trees around our five acres here for a long time. The largest I've ever cut, I cut down a 12-inch branch that was up about 20 feet in the air. 21-foot um, saw with my reach and such, you can get 25 feet roughly. Uh, somewhere in that 20 early low 20 foot because you there's a few things of these things you have to be keep in mind for safety purposes first off you've got to be wearing the right gear i've got my my safety goggles on i'm going to be wearing throw that to the side my amston safety helmet here this is actually one that will fit uh, smaller heads and larger heads a uh, uh, safety helmet and what's kind of cool is it has a chin strap so if you have a smaller hel a child or, or you know something wearing it you've got that Secondly, is about the gloves uh, in my pocket, so we're good with that. This was shot after the cutting. Remember to watch out for electrical lines. Didn't even think about that because we don't have many here. Everything's underground. We have two major electrical lines on the other side, so it's out of the way. I'm, I'm safe here on this side. Watch out for overhead wires. So, And then we've got our saw. I keep the blade cover on until I'm ready to go. It has to be extended, which is really literally flipping the little things and pushing that and off you go now with the pole saw now this this is a, a little bit different than the the chainsaw versions of the pole saw with a chainsaw version you can typically do an undercut which is a branch let's say this is the branch coming out from the tree you could come in you could do an undercut and then you come and cut on top and you're not going to have that the bottom where that undercut happened it's not going to splinter into the tree with a pole saw like this, you really don't have that capability to do an undercut. So it's going to be a little bit different, which generally means I'm going to be doing a cut out here. If, I, if I'd be concerned about the splintering into the tree, a cut out a little ways. And if it splinters, great, and then cut my final cut. So it'd be a two-cut process. Now this particular, these are some, in essence, garbage trees that have grown up here over the last uh, 30 years. So I'm not going to be too careful, and, and I'm not going to be too concerned if it splits and pulls into the bark a little bit. I, I really don't care. These trees are probably going to last longer than, than most of us will. They've been around for a while, and they'll be around for a lot, lot longer. So, um, so be careful uh, when you're cutting. If you're cutting a tree like one of the oaks in the yard, I would be doing it much, much differently. Second thing is, this is... And there's mosquitoes. Second thing, second thing is safety. Of course, you've got the hard hat. We're gonna have the gloves on. We've got the the you know the the, the uh, glasses. When you're cutting, if you're cutting something, you've got to be aware of where it could fall. You don't want to be cutting under it because obviously, if you cut and it breaks, it comes gonna come right down. Second thing is with branches, when you're cutting them, if it's a larger branch, say it's about 10, 12, 15 feet in length and you're cutting it closer, these will cut and they will swing as they fall down and that could be problematic. This, The best when it comes to these things is to make sure you're back at an angle far enough so that if it does swing, it won't hit you. And if it starts to come down, the best thing with these saws is basically, and I know this is going to kind of sound stupid because this is a $400 saw now. I paid $250 for it when I bought it is to let it go. Let the saw go and uh, it, be it that wherever it falls, you know, let it go and step back so you don't get hit on the, the recoil. But 
sometimes when these things are in a tree and they come down, you just let it go and it will fall away safely. It, I've been doing that for almost 10 years with this particular saw and we haven't had, this is the, still the original blade. And you're gonna see how it's going to function out there in our video today. So I think we're just about ready to get things going. And I will do the extending here. And it has little pins. And I'll put, a, I'll put a link in the description, by the way, to this particular saw, which is still available. Uh, price has gone up on this, but I'm going to try to find a couple more that are very similar. The big part of it is that this saw is not your, you know, $20, $30 one that you'd find at your... This is this is more of a commercial, uh, commercial saw. This isn't the one you're going to find at your the big box store. Uh, that's, those are fine for doing smaller tasks, but if I were going to do those types of tasks today... I would be using a battery powered or a gas powered one. So just to give you an idea, there it is. We are fully extended out to 21 feet. So I'm going to take my gloves. And I, I recommend when you're working outside, working with branches or working anything, lawn mowing, leather gloves, they can just a piece of metal, a little fragment of metal, a blade hits, you, you, the, you these teeth are super sharp. The leather glove would at least slow the level of how much it's going to cut into you. Uh, but the, the blade is replaceable on these particular. And again, I have not done that. And on the on the blade, it has the teeth and it has kind of sharpened edge, edges on that. And the reason for that is on some cuts, you can go cut, cut, slide back and forth and give it a little tug. And these blades will basically cut through, especially if it's a green branch. And it makes it so it's much, much quicker than some of the others. And you have that on both sides. The idea though is I'm going to go and I'm going to start and it, you can see that the blade is curved. I'll start on the one side of it and cut a little bit and maybe hold it a little higher and cut and then come down again. So I can try to cut it as smoothly or as level as possible so that they'll just fall straight down. And then we'll come back with the trailer a little bit later and pick everything up. So I'm going to get to it. Let's see how long this is going to take to clear out some of these branches in, on this little township road. What's kind of nice about the 20 foot reach, I can actually reach into the ditch and cut some of these smaller branches off without having to go into that ditch. Because if I'm in the ditch, I'm already four to five feet shorter than I am out here on top of the road. All right, that was, let's see, can I see how much? That was about 15, 20 minutes of cutting. I want to take you down and take a look at what I just did. I am completely out of out of air. This is going to go to the front of the video, but I want to say it twice. This was shot after the cutting. Remember to watch out for electrical lines. Didn't even think about that because we don't have many here. Everything's underground. We have two major electrical lines on the other side, so it's out of the way I'm, I'm safe here on this side. Watch out for overhead wires. So for those of you watching the end of the video, that will, you'll see that twice. Okay, I'm gonna take the phone and I'm not going to stop this because I wanna show you what kind of things I was cutting down. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more trimming and there's a spot down here where I'm gonna probably go get a chainsaw. But we've got some box elder trees. Most of these are box elder that we cut some branches off. And, and I went up in, up there. I wanted so that there's a good 15, 15 to 20 feet over the road, like right there. There's a branch there that I should have hit. I'll nip it off. And this is a this is an elm tree here. And there's a few few more. I should almost get a chainsaw and probably take it apart or take it at that Y. But I needed to get those branches off. And you can see some of these are three and four inches in diameter that were taken with that saw. And they fell 
from up there you can see where and you can see some of the the splint splintering and uh and and ripping of the bark obviously an undercut would have been great but it's next to impossible with a a saw and here's the one that took the longest time right here part of it was i was running out of gas part of it was is it was a that branch right up there which is laying right here i just wanted to cut it all at once because it all pretty much had to come down that was about six inches in diameter and i also had to cut it at a slight angle so instead of cutting about six inches across i was cutting closer to eight inches so it took some time i was running out of gas but that's the way it goes <sighs> okay so the total run time of this video for those of you wondering it was 44 minutes so maybe i was cutting for longer than that and i'll have to put that uh, that time in there i'll want to get to the studio we'll figure out how long, how long i was cutting and I'll put that information in over top of it. So this is John Young with Weekend Handyman. The hat and everything, I'll put all those links in the description below. Because again, this one works for adults and it can work for children. If you've got the kids, uh, then you've got that. And you're teaching them protection of themselves to protect themselves early when they're doing projects like this. Pole saw, again, everything in the description below. So you can go check out this one, which does a really nice job. Again, that's almost 10 years old. And then you see it's still cutting, cut through very, very well. And then uh, another option, it might be just a little bit cheaper, but still give you that professional quality cut. Again, John Young, Weekend Handyman, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.